Hey guys, welcome back to another one of these rant videos that I've suddenly decided to do again after like two years, three years. Anyways, welcome back to one of these unscripted rant videos. Uh, today, the topic at hand is something that I've always, always, always talked about in my videos. And in fact, I've even made an entire series on. That being the state of lore or just canon in the Elder Scrolls community, or just Elder Scrolls in general. So, the topic at hand today, or at least the topic I want to talk about today, is going to be just that. I want to talk about how the community itself looks at canon, and how we go about interpreting it, as well as the various different schisms that have occurred because of interpretations of lore. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. To start off, I think just Kind of getting this out of the way, I am very much in the Coda-esque part of the community, but that said, I always like to look at things with a very reasonable eye. I don't just say, oh, this is Coda, so it must be better than canon lore that's in the games, or it's just because it isn't 100% proven doesn't mean that it's not better lore, or something like that. But in general, I just, I, 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 I'm in that part of the community, just as a, as a disclaimer. Uh, but I don't just adhere to their views in general. That said, in case you're wondering what this is, I'll start off by doing just what I should have done earlier, which is explain what this video is about. And that's about how lore in the Elder Scrolls has taken on a different shape in the community. And with the purpose of today's video being that I want to discuss its implications and what it is. So, to start off... This all goes back years and years and years before probably any of us, except for maybe a few of the older members, actually started playing the Elder Scrolls games, or just learning about the, the general world and the universe. And that being that when Elder Scrolls lore started out, it had a lot of fan input. In fact, most of the earlier lore was written entirely by the forums, the, the old Bethesda forums. And so many of the people that were involved with it really started thinking of the lore as a very community driven thing in the Elder Scrolls because at the time the devs would very much take everything from them for like example uh I think Akatosh is named after it is actually just a um mix up of the acronyms of a guy named like Smaug something or whatever it, it was a mix up of his name and the letters in it and just as a way to get the point across that the general idea was that everyone could make the lore in the community. But as the Elder Scrolls moved out of its more niche roots and into the triple A sphere of video games, that all started to change because now it's not as easy to add lore. The game development suddenly shoots up a ton in how long it takes to be made, how long it takes to incorporate these things into the game. And it, and at that, the world started becoming handcrafted instead of being just randomly generated. So adding in these details became much harder. And this is where the first kind of split began to happen in the community. See, the old writer at the studio, uh, Michael Kirkbride, was very much a believer in the idea that the people were responsible for the lore and that the studios or just the developers should respect that. And so that's what he did. He would promote it very heavily in his writings and created what we know as Coda, which is basically his unfinished writings, which after leaving, he decided to finish and publish. And I I've talked on end about this stuff. I I'll leave some links to what it is. Uh, there are some minor, minor inaccuracies, but they don't actually take away from the full part of the story. Like, for example, I think one of them is I misnamed Numidium and all the different brass golems or golems in general and that's about the only mistake in the actual video or things along those lines but anyways michael kirkbride started to become like the head of this counter movement to the more studio dictated lore and as he left the uh the developers he ended up being kind of the guy the go-to guy for this lore that could potentially be added to the game that he just published by himself which because he published by himself is suddenly fanfic because it's not in the games yet, or at least most of it wasn't in the games at the time. But what this ended up doing, like I've kind of been hinting at and kind of saying, is split the community into two major parts. Those being the people from 
the olden days or the people from the Bethesda forums days, the old Bethesda forums days, who really liked the idea that they could create their own lore and that what they believed in at the time was what lore actually was and what it was heading towards. And then there's the other side, which b me not being a part of, I have a very hard time in explaining, who didn't really get that. They're like, hey, why are you guys making up your own fanfic and calling it real lore? It's clear that you just wrote it on some forums a few years back. It, it can't be real lore. Just because some guy who quit the game start mentioned it a few times in his writings doesn't mean it's canon, which, which they're not wrong about. But there's the... Because uh, we've seen it multiple times throughout the history of the games that the lore is very much pulled from those works. Like, for example, ESO, so much lore from it is pulled directly from these works of Coda and the old Bethesda forums that writers like Schick worked in because they're fans of that kind of stuff, and they they like the same idea that Michael Kirkbride was going for. But it's very much damaged the community. Like, I've gotten this comment many, many times over, and it's when I discuss metaphysics, and metaphysics is a very shaky topic in the other Scrolls community, because not everyone understands it, and there's a lot of people who think trying to understand it is stupid because it delves so heavily into Coda, and Coda-esque ideas, even if it may not be like that, even if all of it is 100% canon. They just don't think that it's worth doing because it's so closely related to things like Coda, which... I understand, and in fact, that might not even be the only reason that they don't like it. They just might think it's stupid. And in that case, I think what you're talking about is stupid. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's very much split the community. And I think here, after kind of explaining what it is, to be honest, I made the very old, non-canon side of the argument seem like the underdogs, the good guys, but it's not like that. It's very much the other side, the, the canon side, or the people who are very, very much canon. And refuse to accept anything, especially, uh, I'll get into this in a second, in the con section. But, in general, just because I've kind of painted them as the bad side, quote-unquote, doesn't mean that they, don't, they aren't right. Because they're just looking at this rationally, th thinking, yes, it may happen, but just because it may happen doesn't mean it's, po it's gonna happen. Which is something that the, the, the extremes of both communities are very bad with. And the extreme side of the canon part, or the more canon-sided part, they'll they'll kill you if you do anything. I would kill, obviously, metaphorically. If you mentioned anything about uh, not believing everything that's written in the games, or written in books, and th they'll be like, hey, you can't use your own theories, you can't start trying to connect dots and make assertions about things that you've learned. While on the non-canon side, you've seen it on my channel, at least if you watch my channel. That is that they'll very much literally just jump to the end of the conclusion and say, no, this is the re real reason why, which I myself am personally very much guilty of. That said, neither side is technically bad. And I know I won't really be able to cover this all in this video because it's not very much scripted and to be honest, I'm pretty tired when recording this. But there's benefits to both sides, and I think that sterilizing or very kind of polarizing figures like Xerix the Hacker on, or I don't know who there is on the other side, but there's bound to be someone on the other side. Uh, I won't mention any names of people I know because I know they're not personally that bad in it, but I, I, there's bound to be some sort of figure on the other side, for the canon side at least, who is just as polarizing. But just because those people are very extreme in their beliefs on lore doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at what they're saying and try and understand it and start brushing it off. Because um, I think what happened earlier today was uh, on the Imperial Knowledge Discord server, I was scrolling through, uh, and I saw that people started disregarding the idea he presented of barbarians and how when he was talking about it, the whole concept of how because cause in his video, he, um, this, this is a video that Xerix Akron made called If Skyrim Was Good. Uh, and in it, he talks about how all the barbarians or all the all the bandits you see across Skyrim are used to be soldiers or people inside the cities. And there's a whole story behind it. It's very controversial. But what these people started doing was very much disregarding it. Yes, they listened to some parts, but I personally think that that barbarian or people kicked out of the city's argument you'll have to you might actually have to watch this video to understand this a bit but if you do understand the argument because i think it's pretty infamous in the community you may understand why 
it does have a little bit of credence to it. It's not as though it's purely based off of idiocy, and it's definitely not, because Zarek is definitely well-versed in Elder Scrolls lore. And while you may not uh, agree on everything he says, disregarding opinions is a very bad thing. It's how we've actually managed to become these two halves of the community in the process. Because people refuse to see the other side of the, of the situation, and... And in general, just things that result from putting yourself in this kind of echo chamber of people agreeing with you. But getting back to the benefits of both sides, or at least jumping to the benefits of both sides, I think that in general, the non-canon side of this whole argument presents new ideas, the ability to connect ideas from pre-existing canon and weaving them to something that definitely makes sense. That's because when uh, some of you may not think this, but when you see a theory video that any YouTuber makes, no matter how or what side of the community they agree with, it's technically taking ideas and ways of thinking from the non-canon stuff or parts of the community, even if they may identify with the canon side. Because just by tearing themselves away from the purely existing canon, they're already doing what we on the non-canon and very theoretical and metaphysical side of the community already do, which is connecting dots and just trying to understand things that may not be explicitly said. With that out of the way, there's also the benefits of the canon side, which is the much more rational thinking. Now, that's not saying that people on the non-canon side aren't rational thinkers, because they are some of the smartest people, or at least some of the best detectives I know. They, they definitely know how to dig around a piece of information and find all the little bits of it that can be extracted. But, like I've said before, they lack that little bit of uh, restraint, because I personally lack that restraint too when it comes to theories. So by incorporating that little canon side where you restrict yourself with the works that Bethesda has done, you're very much allowing for yourself to have realistic connections. And I think, in general, that's what the canon side presents to this whole argument. But that said, both sides do have their cons. And like I mentioned with the non-canon side, it's the lack of restraint. In the case of the canon side, it's this almost inability to try and look at things from a new perspective. And I, I know this might be very much cited on my end of the belief spectrum, but in my experience, people who are very much on the canon side or the more more canon-esque side of the community refuse to believe things that they deem as incorrect or uh, were at some point said to be true in a previous game and are now wrong in a future game. Uh, a great example being all the new lore added in ESO where a lot of people for some reason from the canon side of the community refuse to believe that ESO lore is true. No matter how much we, for some reason, on the non-canon side or the Kodask side, attempt to tell them that it is. Because, yes, when it started, ESO was very much a work of basically fanfic. But, obviously, they can't fix some things. But, over time, they've managed to kind of bring it into line with the rest of the lore, especially with the expansions. So, by being stuck in this mindset, the canon side is unable to shift as quickly and cover these new lore subjects that are very, very, very much covered or basically soaking in CODA and its ide ideologies from this new game, or at least this game's new expansions. And I, I see that as a very sad thing, because just because they're slow at moving and understanding things, they're not very accepting of the new ideas. But once again, this is all just my massive opinion rant piece, and yes, I may be heavily biased, I may have, may have said things that are wrong, but in the end, I personally, when it all comes down to it, think that the non-canon side, while not nearly as much liked by the serious uh, lore beards in the community, is probably the more lore-filled part, the part where people actually like discussing stuff. Meanwhile, when you're in the non-canon side, it's basically like, uh, if nope, if this isn't written in a book, you're wrong. There's no, no conjecture. You can't, no conjecturing. Yeah, absolutely wrong. 
or at least that's how it's been in my experience where if you can't give them exact evidence immediately even your conjecturing is wrong and yes i i may be guilty of saying telling people hey man maybe your conjecturing is a bit wrong but that's only because the way i go about it is when i do this theorizing i very much base it in canon but i also outstep the bounds by incorporating coda esque ideas that a lot of us do on the non-canon side of the community but not so much on the canon side but with all that said just in general i think it's important that we kind of start bridging this gap with more channels doing more coda stuff and more people trying to incorporate these ideas into their videos and in what they say because living yourself in an echo chamber is probably the worst thing you can do especially for your own personal growth so with that thanks for watching this video i know it was very very ranty but college started this week for me and i just needed a video and i was like hey i i talk about this subject so much in my videos about canon and michael kirkbride and lauren schick and eso so why don't I just explain what it is and what the real problems are with it? And that's how this video came to be. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, you know the whole stuff at the end. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, don't leave a like or leave a dislike. Go ahead. Uh, if you want to give me feedback, go ahead. I really do listen to every bit of feedback and I try and change as much as possible to make it better in the upcoming videos so please do that and if you really like this subscribe and please 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 hit that bell button because i know for a fact that most of my subs don't get notifications when i upload a video and i upload at least twice a week or at least i try to i know it might slow down a bit during this time that i'm in college but please do hit that bell button anyways like i said earlier thanks for watching and never forget that it was all just me ranting about stuff in a forum from 25 years ago. Kuyo out.